got Layton Allen on this week and Nick Herzog. Layton, you have a property management company and you also are a real estate broker. And then Nick, you are actually a real estate agent as well and you guys both work for a really well-known company, Berkshire Hathaway. So um, Layton, I'd like to hear from you this week and kind of see what it is, what got you into this industry and why you started in, like from childhood to now, the process. All right. Golly. Yeah. Let me get my red solo cup. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. If I was going to start at my childhood, I uh, I grew up in a uh, low middle class home. My dad was a, a Baptist preacher. We moved a lot. Uh, my dad would go into churches that were falling apart and help put them back together. And uh, so uh, so he. Uh, he so we moved a lot so i think by the time i graduated high school i had moved, lived in like 17 different houses and so uh, we moved, moved moved all over the place yeah wow. and is uh, that like a, an exact number 17. I, we counted one time i think it was 17 Damn. houses okay yeah. now some of those houses were in the same city yeah right so we probably moved to five or six major cities you know at the time i graduated high school went to four different high schools um and so that was just kind of my thing i, I uh I think it kind of feeds into my entrepreneurial spirit yeah. is that we would go into a place and we would establish roots for a few years and move on. Really? And so, yeah. So, uh, so I think that, so when I went to graduate high school, went to college, didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I took the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the doctor path and went for like six or seven years Whoa. Uh, and, okay. became, and became a teacher. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what I, made that shit? Sorry, I had six or seven no, years. Did you specialize? No, I was just saying. I was just saying. It took me that long. Was, uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get any doctor classes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, graduated in education. Went and got a master. Did some stuff. Any, anyways, me and my wife, we ended up teaching both uh, moving to Shre back to Shreveport, Bossier, teaching in okay. the public school system. Uh, I say about three years into teaching, I just felt restless. Knew that. Uh, my goals that I had set up for our family was for my wife to be at home and raise kids. For us to be able to do that, it wasn't going to happen on teacher salary. Right. I love teachers. My mom's a educator. My mother was an educator. A lot of educators that I know and, and what they do is special. Uh, it wasn't for me, so I was dabbling in some real estate on the side, and uh, really, uh, we we came up with a plan that I was going to quit full. I was going to go full time real estate. And within five years, my wife was going to be able to, my wife, Laurie, was going to be able to come stay home with the kids. And uh, really nine months in, you know, we, my business was taking off and she was able to quit. Uh, the day after I quit from the school system, we found out we were, that she was pregnant with our second child. Okay. So yeah, it gave me a mini heart attack. And uh, <laughs> really, uh, really, you know, motivation's a good thing. Yeah. And providing for my family was motivation. And so, uh, so that's uh, really led me into a career in real estate. Okay, and so from there, that that process from quitting teaching and getting into real estate, starting your own brokerage, how long did that take? What was yeah. that process? So, uh, you know, I guess I guess for me, it was just finding where there was a need and meeting it. Okay. And uh, I've, I've really early on established myself <clears throat> Uh, I had a, I had a, my first broker, Brad, was a, a mentor of mine, and he had some rental properties, and uh, he had a property management company, and so I just kind of followed in his footsteps, mm -hmm. started uh, started really partnering with investors and helping them build portfolios. Okay. And to be honest with you, that company that I started seven years ago is really still the foundation of my business interesting and in that we 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 you know have four full-time staff we manage about 550 rental properties for mm -hmm. about 40 investors i still help those investors uh build their portfolios um and uh and so i'm still really in that uh niche market doing that and so uh so after about uh, four years into that company, I realized that my staff could run the company better than I could. <laughs> okay. and so I gladly stepped out of the daily operations. That company is called Port City Realty. Okay. I stepped out of that company and started doing sales and uh, strictly sales, which uh, so me and my wife started an independent sales business, Allen Realty. After about two or three years in that business, we bought the Berkshire Hathaway franchise. 
Which has led us to where we're at. Yeah, which is yeah. now you have like how many agents now? So we're at right around 85 agents. That's insane. And that's been built in like the past two years. Yeah, so we, we just celebrated our two year anniversary. That's insane. And Nick's um, actually one of those agents. Yeah. 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 So uh, Nick, uh, tell me a little bit about you, man, because we, we really never talked about it. Like how you come up, where you're from, um, yeah, where you're yeah. at now. I'm low key, man. I go, yeah. uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't talk too much. I try to stay in, I try to stay in behind the limelight and just yeah. uh, do my thing. But okay. yeah, I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I was a military guy. I was in the Air Force from 2000 to 2000. I think you're my first veteran. So uh, oh, thank yeah. you for your oh, service, yeah. man. Yeah, cool. And, uh, and so, so yeah, so I, my wife uh, is from Benton, Louisiana. Okay. Um, I met her back in 2004 at the uh, the Rock and Rodeo. You know, <laughs> Y'all stole yeah. a donkey? Yeah. You know, I, mean, I mean, who didn't, who hasn't been there a time For, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's actually a, um, it's a nightclub here that uh, is uh, pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, they have country music downstairs yeah, and the hip hop yeah. dance dance right. upstairs. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was a lot better back in '04. Right? Man, I think, <laughs> think y'all need to. Uh, maybe there should be a support group. People that make yeah. spouses right have like rock a, and rodeo. Have a reunion or something. <laughs> <laughs> I love you it. Know? If they're still together. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and so and so I was TDY at Barksdale for three four months back in '04. Met my wife. Um, I got out of the service in August of that year. Went back to Indianapolis, started working for my dad's construction company. I was remodeling, um, doing project management for him. Um, I think in 08, my wife graduated from nursing school, moved to Indianapolis. Uh, she lasted five years. And then that white stuff kept falling every year. Yep. They call, they call, we call it snow up north. <laughs> and, uh, she, and she came home one day and was like, uh, yeah, this ain't gonna work for me. And so, uh, and so me and my dad really weren't getting along in the remodeling business. I had a way that I wanted to grow the business and he was just kind of used to his way that he grew the business. Yeah. And so we kind of were button heads anyways. Okay. And so, um, and so I told my wife, I said, look, there's like, we just, got, oh yeah, we just got married in, uh, 2011. And so 2012, we moved down here. We lived with my wife's parents for nice. two years. And uh, I don't have a college education. I got military background. Uh, thank God my wife had an education so she could pay the bills. We lived with her parents <laughs> for two years. And I wanted to get into real estate. I wanted to flip, my goal was actually just to flip houses full time. Was that inspired by doing that contracting work and knew the business yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. And my dad, you know, my dad had a bunch of um, um, just friends that were in real estate that flipped houses that had a bunch of rentals. And, uh, and, and then so before that, you know, back like I think 07, 06, I bought my first rental property, a duplex that I still own today in Indianapolis. Okay. And, um, and so anyway, so we moved here. I wanted to flip houses, and and uh, you know, I did one or one or two a year, but not enough to really feed the family. And um, and so then I kind of said, hey, what, what's up, what's going on with this real estate sale? What sell a house? And so I I got in, I got my real estate license two three years ago, three four yeah. years ago, and. And so uh, the rest is history. Just keep on going, going, going. Uh, it's a, it's a yeah. hustle for sure every day. Well, today I really want to talk about both of you guys. Um, so I've known each of you a while, but both of you thrive on relationship-based business and just relationships in general, um, not only in your business life, but also in your personal life. You know, I see that from both of you guys. So I just wanted to kind of get some feedback from you guys on that, like how it's shaped you, who you are and what you're doing, you know, and how you utilize relationships to help you in your personal life and in your business life yeah what you got well i mean i just you know what i uh what i tell agents all the time or really anybody in business is your your number one asset are the people around you mm -hmm. that's just the bottom line you can invest in technology you can invest uh, in a lot of things and tools and assets but the number one asset are, are the relationships you have and uh they can uh they can be destroyed quickly uh, and they take a lot of time to grow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that for our industry specifically in real estate is a high trust position, right? Or a, a high trust industry. And so really cultivating re relationships takes years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that in our fast paced culture where everybody wants a quick return on their investment, um, that they miss out the investment uh, that a relationship can bring you. Right. And uh, that it is gonna take uh, years to, to grow that and really ultimately trust um, if I was going to uh, 
I was going to boil it down to what what helps build trust in a relationship is doing what you're saying you're going to do, right? And so if you make a promise or an obligation to a client that you're going to do something, then you do it. Yeah. And if you don't do it, then you just hurt that relationship. Yep. And you get bad feedback, and it results in unsuccessful you sure. know, trust yeah. there. Yeah. And so you see a lot of people that fake it, right? Yep. And they have this thing, fake it till you make it. Yep. That, that doesn't thing, work well. It doesn't work well. <laughs> and so uh, and so you know so we so really and I know it's cliche to say this, but really in in, in our in our industry. It's a, it really is a marathon. And those that sprint, get a lot of sales really fast, are the ones that tank and they're, they, they're gone within a year or two. Yeah. I think so, it's, yeah, if you're just living off that quick ROI, or P&L, or, you know, that mentality, you're never gonna make it in any industry, not just real yeah. estate or, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I, I, you know, I've been doing this for a while now on the marketing side and all I wanna do every day is cultivate relationships because I know that I'm building a client base for the long run, yeah, you know, right. and I may have to groom that for five years before it converts, oh, yeah. but it's worth it because once it converts, you have it and it's not going anywhere. And I think it's just because yeah. just like you said, a trust factor. Yeah. Um, what about you, Nick? You got any weight on that? I feel well, like, I, if so, my background, so you gotta think about me. I moved here seven years ago. I didn't know nobody. Right. So then I get into real estate, I still know nobody. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so the fastest way for me to get business was pick up the phone and literally just start cold calling people. Yeah. And so literally my first six months in the business, I like pretty much opened up the white pages, but they had they have it online. And I literally just cold called neighborhoods, landlines, and most of them were people over the age of sixty five. Yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, I got business out. Right. And so now, you know, and now, you know, with, with Layton's company now, he's helped me cultivate relationships more than just picking up the phone every day yeah you know because when I pick up the phone you gotta understand when I, I'm on the other end with a seller they don't know who I am right so I'm trying to I'm trying to make them trust me over a minute to two minute conversation and that's yeah. it's not easy to do yeah you know and so so definitely trust and in, in, in getting people to trust you in the long run mm -hmm. Because in 20 years from now, I don't want to have to pick up the phone. I want to say, no, we all want referrals. Yeah, want, you built it. You built the base yeah. by establishing it up front and you know cultivating those things. Yeah, I think um, that's the most important thing in any of our industries. If you're in the service industry, mm -hmm. um, when I say service, I don't mean like restaurant. I mean service, like yeah. we physically are working with people on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't care what industry you're in. At the end of the day, when it comes down to that, and if you're in a sink or swim position, if you still have relationships you've created. Right. Usually you can survive in a bad time, yeah. you know, yeah. but if you haven't done that legwork yeah. and you were just about the quick dollar, no matter yeah. what business you're in, yeah. it's going to fail. Yeah. It's yeah. just inevitable. Well, and I think it, it, I think it depends on, you know, I think a big thing with relationship building is, um, this is what I look for in, in, in an employee or, an, or a real estate agent that's going to come work with me is how do they treat people that have, that have nothing to offer them? Yeah. Right, because I think it's easy to say, I want to go build a relationship with this person because they, they make a lot of money or because they're about to list their house. Exactly. Right. And no, so for that's me, the, I think it's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. And so so for me is, you know, how do you act around somebody that can provide you nothing? Mm -hmm. Do you treat them the same way mm -hmm. as you do, right? And uh, and so and because I think that transparency is a big deal. Yeah. People people see you do that. I also think, you know, for me, my result in a relationship is not to gain their business is to gain their endorsement. Yeah. And so I tell people that up front. I say, listen, you know, I want this. This is not a commission check for me. This is a relationship that's going to last 20 to 30 years. Right. And what I want after you're done with a, this transaction is I want your endorsement. That's what I'm going after. Exactly. Sure, I want to get a commission check and that's yeah. great, but I want your endorsement. And that's really, you know, uh, that's really what snowballs a business mm -hmm. is that you help 10 people and those 10 people have a sphere of influence of 300 each. Right. Right. So now you have a 3000 people mm -hmm. you're contacting you didn't know before. Right. And it snowballs. And you're so, not in like now it's like, I feel like that giving value to someone is, is way more rewarding than actually just trying to sell to someone. Sure. So like if you're constantly giving your network value, you're going to get it back in return at some point. Yeah. You know, if you're just, and uh, Nick and I met and talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, when you're putting content out, like on social media for, right. for marketing your company, instead of constantly pushing product, actually just give mm -hmm. give your viewers and your network some insight on you know who you are, right. and um, maybe some helpful information, 
and make them trust you, feel more sure. comfortable sending you business because they're getting to know you on a personal level. Yeah. Not just, hey, this person's trying to sell a house to me 24-7. Right. Yeah. And um, that, that mentality, if I feel like if more people would implement that, no matter what business you're in, at scale, you would double or triple your yeah. profits. But not it's not even about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you get the mentality of make money, make money, you're never going to be able to no. do that because you're going to be too, wor too worried about the short term. Well, it's, it's having a heart of a servant. You just said service industry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of an industry that's not a service, that is a service, right? right. I mean, we're all, we're all selling something and we're, you know, ultimately, uh, I think human nature, mm -hmm. we, we are built to serve other people. Yeah. And I think that we can become very selfish and very self-centered. Uh, human that's, nature. That is human nature. And so what we, you know, so I want to take a, I want my, my company, my anything I'm affiliated with to take a position of servanthood or to, to serve and how can we serve? How can we meet needs? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that really has to be the focus on relationships. So, yeah. People um, hire, they, people hire people who they trust. That's all yeah. there is to it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're a networking group. Actually, uh, Leighton and I started this group, and then Leighton, you've since stepped out, and Nick took your place, and that's all we talk about on a weekly basis. Is yeah. You do business with people you know, like, and trust. Yeah. Um, we're in there. We're like a family. We all help yeah. each other out. It's not about the money. Yeah, sure. But we're making good money by doing it. Well, we've all grown. We've all grown. Yeah. 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 Our, our businesses are growing. And uh, with you guys, I think, so you guys sell experience. I sell attention, but they both play hand in hand. You know what I mean? Because... You can use intention to get people the experience. Mm -hmm. And the same, you know, it's just so both industries cross over a lot, yeah. but um, it's just an indirect way of looking at it, you know what I mean? Well, I think that I think that our industry, your industry, mm -hmm. has really become a commodity. Yeah. In that I know 10 people that do what you do. Exactly. <laughs> you know, 100 people 100 that do what I do, yeah. right? <laughs> and so if we're all going, if we're going to go through the list and say, okay, you know, this is what we do, you know, these are the 10 things we do. Well, there's five other people that do the same 10 things. So what is it that makes us different? What What's going to set you apart that people are going to start to use you? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's where I really say that's an intangible, you know. I think that some people are gifted and that part comes easy. Some people have to work at it. Yeah. But uh, there has to be some, in whatever industry you're in, so some intangible, you know, I've heard, it, I've heard people call it an unexpected extra. What are you doing that uh, people aren't doing and can't right. compete with? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what. Uh, yeah, way to set yourself apart from everyone else. For sure. <clears throat> but and, and that gets that gets a little thick too because if we're if you're in all in the same industry and you're all trying the new yeah. coolest deal, yeah. you know how do you set yourself apart? Then it all I think all comes back down to worth ethic. Well, yeah, I think, you know, I think uh, we're, especially I mean, in real estate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, in any industry, I don't give a shit what yeah. industry yeah. you're yeah. in. Yeah. Like, if you're there's a mentality now with society when they look at stuff and they say okay if you go through instagram profiles right now and you're looking at a lot of kids between the ages of 18 and 24 and they have as their job title entrepreneur mm -hmm. but are they really you know because they right. it's like they haven't they haven't done you haven't put in the work right. like a true entrepreneur doesn't need to announce that they're an entrepreneur you know what i mean yeah. what is it it don't say that on your profile does it yeah. you know what i mean but you started two successful businesses you're managing a company that that has 80 agents and um you know with one of the largest i mean brokerages literally in the world yeah um it's just insane how that that you know people discount the worth ethic like you say okay you can do this and make this this way so easy you know it's so quick it don't work that way i don't give well, a damn well i think i think what gets overlooked is we glamorize people that have be, become successful mm -hmm. without um without uh, looking into the work that got them there yeah and so well, well, failure. Yeah. i mean I, yeah. I, i'm sure layton has failed many times yeah with What's four city <laughs> with, yeah so yeah. yeah look at people's failure and that tells yeah. you their success yeah. well how yeah. many how many times have you ate shit Oh yeah, my god! Oh, like oh. starting your career, that, yeah. it happens. You have, to, you have to do it. And then another thing, you have to do shit for free. Yeah. You just have to do shit for free for yeah. a while to, to, before you know so people trust you but sometimes. You don't, yeah. you don't grow unless you fail. No. Lake wouldn't be where he's at unless he failed a few yeah. times and learned. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one thing I, I tell my agents all the time is we if we polled 100 people on who wanted to win in life, we would get a hundred yeses. Everybody wants to win. Yeah. Right. But what separates the 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 top uh, the top in your industry from everybody else is not do they want to win, but they refuse to lose. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the key, right? Yeah. Is that when when life hits you hard, 
when there are things out of your control that you can't do, you know. And I think that that, if I was going to boil it down to where it led me to where I'm at, is um, is that I, I'm, I structured a, a situation that I control my own destiny, mm -hmm. in a sense, and I don't depend on other people, right. right? And so I'm not depending on some technology or some outside source mm -hmm. to feed me business. I'm going out and creating it. Yeah, right? when people want to sign up like and say, okay, I want to be, say I want to be a real estate agent, for example, they sign up and they, they see all these people around them making good money. They're like, oh, it's just gonna come easily. Yeah. You know, because these people are doing it and they, you know, they, they signed up for this course for six thousand dollars. Yeah. They signed up for this coaching. Yeah. Or they yeah. signed up with the, the yeah. best the, the new broker in town. Yeah. Yeah. None of that shit matters if you're not working hard. Yeah. If you're not wanting to put in the work and to do it. I don't, yeah. you know, we're all independent contractors. Every exactly. real estate agent, we we have a desk and we have a phone. Yeah. And we have the tools to the brokerage yeah. that are given to us at our yeah. at our but we have to do it. Yeah, I mean, but those tools to... don't define you. You know, no, your, no. your work ethic defines you. You know, oh, yeah, and um, for sure. you know, that's going back down to a relationship level. That's the easiest way. And I say easy, it's not easy, but that is the, I guess, most important piece of that process is the hard work, yeah. the building relationships, cultivating that, and then turning it into a business that's profitable. Yeah. Yeah. But not only for, uh, you know, in your pocket money, but also just for your self worth. Yeah. You know, as far as yeah. selflessness and giving, 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 yeah. you know. I think uh, I had an agent, I was interviewing an agent one time and uh, I mentioned, I said, well, where, where are your goals? What do you want to be? And he said, well, I wish I was sitting where you're at, you know, alluding to that I'm in a position now where I'm at. And, mm -hmm. and I started thinking, I was like, you know, he might want to be where I'm at. <clears throat> But does but does, does he want to go through what I got? Right. See that, right. yeah, it looks great. It, yeah. it looks great from outside perspective, yeah. and people can always yeah. judge you too. You know, no one ever knows what you went through. No, yeah. no. But the great thing about it is we can talk about it. You know, what yeah. I mean, we can tell people, hey, yeah. this yeah. is not fun. Yeah, I had to deal with this. I had yeah. to deal with. Yeah. Nick, you said you cold call a lot of people. You got to deal with fifty no's to get one yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's real estate. That's <laughs> yeah, real estate. well, that's estate. that's sales. I mean, that's, that's you know, yeah, that's sales. Yeah. That's real estate. Yeah, I mean you. I mean, it's it's just a lot like you said a lot of people don't know what you go through on a daily basis to get where you're at yeah because they, they just see the outside they just see the Facebook post yeah. they just see that they don't yeah. see yeah. they don't see the eight to five or nine to five yeah. and in our industry no one's telling me to go to work at nine o'clock yeah no you just know that's another thing <laughs> that's another thing man. Because yeah. like, when you're in an industry working for yourself you have to make yourself get out of bed yeah um and the world starts spinning at 8 a.m. normally right. in a business world and people are operating whether they're taking their kids to school right. and then work or they're staying at home no matter what if they're in the day to day right. they're up moving around and if you're not up moving around with them yeah. you're not going to do anything you ain't making any money and so, but, yeah. so then it goes back to what's your why yeah. yeah is it family is it money is it what's like what what gets you up every morning yeah and so i feel like a lot i know in our industry i don't like a lot of people have a big enough why mm -hmm. i mean i i, I understand in all industries yeah i agree, I agree. I mean, why? For me, I'm in love with the process of just doing it to yeah. do it and be successful, but not for from a money standpoint. Yeah, I think I'm just doing it because I just love to see it grow. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just cool to see what you started out with and what it can turn into. And literally, I'm not more important than anyone else. Yeah, I'm just trying to bust my ass every day and do something cool, yeah. you know, and be yeah. different. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's your why, Layton? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think it's changed a lot, right? And so, uh, so I would say, I mean, if we're going to get very, very, very practical with, so you know, early on, I was, I was just trying to, uh, to generate business so that my wife could quit teaching and stay home. That was my first, like, that was our first step, right? Yeah. So, and we, and we go back to the hard work put in, and so my routine for the first year to two years. <clears throat> I was waking up every morning and I was driving the streets in the ghetto of Shreveport yep. and I was looking for any house that was boarded up. Okay. And so I, I, every night I went home and I, I had a cordless drill and I charged my battery. And so what I started doing is I started going into these boarded up houses, un, uh, undrilling the, the board, climbing through a window or a door. No way. And um, yeah, well, this, was, this was like eight, <laughs> this was eight years ago. And, uh, so I would, uh, I would climb in, I would take pictures 
I would go home, I would research who owned the house, I would contact them and ask them if they wanted to sell it to one of my investors. Okay. And that's what I did. Really? And so I was going into these houses, and so then once I started building, they started buying some of these houses, then I was managing those houses. So I was working uh, literally 80 hours a week. I was I was on the field for during the day, I would get home in the afternoon, and then I would become like a bookkeeper assistant and do all the paperwork, all the books. Um, I hired my first assistant with 80 properties we were managing, and she was actually working in my guest house. Okay. <laughs> my house, which is very oh, wow. weird. <laughs> uh, and so that was my office, and so then we kept growing and growing and growing. And so that was, you know, there was nothing glamorous about that. Right. Those were some of the most difficult times I went through. Um, you know, for now, I would say now I mean, my wife is still my family, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, helping other people. Well, how many, so how many kids do you have now? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, I, have, uh, I have, we have three biological children. Okay. And uh, we have a foster child. Okay. And uh, we're kind of in the process of uh, possibly adopting that well, that's, child. Well, that's so, exciting. Yeah, so that's really become our wives a family. Yeah. It's really the fostering and adopting. In, uh, community okay and uh, you know it's just a, it's a very very dark place mm -hmm. and there's a lot of hurt people involved in that community and uh, there are some great organizations that serve them and so, yeah. uh, so that's really what I want to do is tie into that help help them um, and uh, that's really our cause. Okay. Is, is what you well, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a good reason to wake up every morning yeah. and, and do the grind. Well, yeah. The cool, yeah. cool thing about it is um, when you look at that um, when people look at something, they say they want to do it, or so they look at you and you're in a position of power now, okay? True. And they say, well, it's easy for you to say because you're sitting there. Right. They don't realize that you know everything they're about to go through, yeah. and you've already done it. Yeah. So it's so funny, yeah. and, and you see that all the time in any industry, on any sheet of paper, like you see yeah. that. You, someone sits across from you like, okay, well, you know, you can say this because, you know, you're sitting right there. You can talk, yeah. you can, you can educate me on real estate and tell me this is what I need to do because you're right. sitting there making all the money right. or you, yeah. you can tell me all about marketing because you know you you guys are successful sure well no because um I busted my ass and I've <laughs> failed a million times to know what sure. works and what doesn't work sure. and I'm trying to help you sure yeah you know and I see that well, a lot yeah and and you know and that's what I would like to say you know with Nick one of the <clears throat> first attributes uh or you know, characteristics that I noticed with Nick is that he's coachable. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more frustrating than somebody in leadership than to have somebody under their leadership that's not coachable. Nick, do you think that's because of your military background or just you as a person? I, I, probably a little bit of both. Okay. I mean, so the, obviously the military is very structured and yeah. has a discipline. And I think a lot of it just comes from, you know, just maybe an entrepreneurial mm -hmm background of my dad quit his job and started his construction company yeah and probably seeing his day-to-day -day, he was kind of like what you said he was in the field every day doing remodeling and then at the night he was doing the bookkeeping yeah, exactly doing the you have to yeah and that's <laughs> what oh he, he like slept like six hours a day. yeah and, so, that's and that's just the way he was used to it yeah you know and so he did it up every every single day so i think that's that's probably but, a lot and what i see with nick what we share a lot of is we're always striving to, to uh, learn more mm -hmm. <clears throat> so nick has a coach and uh, I had a coach to help me build my business, and I paid a lot of money to this coach. Yeah. And I did it because, uh, you know, I, I knew I didn't know all the answers. Okay, well, let me ask you this. I know a lot of people in uh, industries across the board sure. will seek someone out to pay them to learn yeah. how to work. Yep. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I can give you all the tools, but if you're not going to actually go out there and try it. to generate yeah. or do it, Right. It's not going to come to you. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know if it's teaching them how to work. I think it's holding them accountable. Right, accountability makes it all. Yeah, it makes it all flow. Huge. And so, you know, I've done stuff. <clears throat> excuse me, where I've, I've strategically put accountability in place for myself. Right. And so, uh, early on, it was hiring a coach. Mm -hmm. Well, then when I started selling houses, I created a board of directors. Nobody was telling me to do that. <laughs> right. I just picked four or five guys that are that are ten years ahead of me that are successful and that like me and and I and I like to trust them and I just said hey will you be on my board of directors I bought them lunch two or three times a year and I would just okay. let them speak into my company okay and then I would ask them advice when I needed it and what really happened is I got four or five great guys for free on my team yeah and then they're out endorsing me mm -hmm. and it gives me a panel to really avoid some stupid mistakes yeah because you yeah. have to you can't make all the, the decisions in your head yeah. Right. I mean, being well, an entrepreneur think, or being in a business owner, it's lonely well, <laughs> because there's nobody else in there. But, I, but yeah. I think it's I think that 
But one of the one of the the most important things to success is really identifying what you're good at and what mm -hmm. you're bad at. No, oh, yeah. And then having the discipline to avoid the things you, your weaknesses or to hire it out. And so that's really what you know. I've noticed that that you've taken advantage of that by delegating things that you are not good at or you don't want yeah, to do, yeah, yeah. And, and focusing on things you are good at. You well, know, it's not a work. it's not a weakness to admit that you just aren't good at something. Right. right. And so no, I, it's fine. And so I just tell people it's accountability. Like, yeah. I'm holding so, myself accountable by saying, "Hey, I cannot do this. I need to do yeah, this." Yeah. And that's, and that's what coaching does. Yeah. yeah. Like my coach told. Me, here's the thing: you have a goal for here. Without coaching, how long is it going to take you to get to here? With a coach. It's gonna your your learning curve is gonna be shorter. Yeah, because they're holding you accountable every day, and and <laughs> they're telling you things that you should be doing that no one else is telling you. Right. Yeah. If you're just in your head all day long, you don't get this yeah, outside or, perspective. Yeah. Or, or you know, your my coach is you know she's already here at yeah. this production. Well, mm -hmm. I want to get to that production. What right. Are you, what are you doing on a daily basis mm -hmm. that I'm not? Yeah. Yeah. And so she goes over that, and we have a plan, a goal, and and a coach is great. I mean, yeah. whether well, whether you have it or not. I mean, yeah. whether you well, and I agree it. with, and I agree with DJ when he, when I say coaching, you yeah. know, there is a lot of stuff oh, out there. Yeah. Right. yeah right. I've, seen, right it a lot. I've right seen a lot. Yeah, was, Everyone wants to be a coach. Yeah. I mean, everyone <laughs> wants to make <laughs> a couple I, thousand dollars for just, you know, month. checking in once yeah. a week. Or well, something, I think yeah. that, I think a lot of, of coaching, if I'm using air quotes, coaching <laughs> yeah. is going to focus on what's your head, what's your mentality, mindset. your yeah. mindset, yeah. you know, the health and wealth type right. teaching. And to me, that's never really been a problem for me. So mm -hmm. what we have is, uh, you know, in real estate, we'll get a lot of really motivated people mm -hmm. that don't know what the hell they're doing, right? right? And that's a disaster, right? That, we call that a wrecking ball. Right. So they're going to they're going to get some business done, but they're leaving a wake of destruction. Yeah. Path, right? so, I mean, do you think it's because they're not willing to take any outside perspective or opinion, or do you think that, I mean, why do you think that is? Uh, man, because I don't want to just apply, apply think, everything we're talking about right now applies to all people industries. in, in yeah. any industry. Yeah. So I don't, oh, yeah. when, I, when okay. I ask you all these things, I'm thinking about every yeah. single industry, sure not enough. just real estate, you know, whether it be marketing or, you know, whatever someone's doing, you know, hell, it, you know, whatever. Well, I think, I think you have to have, uh, you have to have somebody that's investing in mm -hmm. you, right? And so you have to have, you have to be working for a company or a leader or with someone that's going to invest in you, right. and uh, and so for, in particular in our industry, mm -hmm. um, there's a there you know I believe that there's a neglect of uh, actually like practical tangible. This is how you run a real estate business. Yeah, gotcha. and I would say that that's probably applicable to a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? It's it it is important to pick up business and to prospect and to get deals, but you know we want we want a we want I want people around me that know what they're doing. Yeah. Or that you know, our goal is that our our agents become experts in real estate. Yeah. Right. Well, they're not going to get going and getting twenty deals in six months isn't making them experts, right? And so, who is it investing in you? And if you're not, don't ask my invest. Go find the people that are going to invest in you. I think making you an expert. If you're an expert on relationships, you can be an expert in any industry. We'll in my opinion, right. We'll, yeah. defi we'll define expert. I've read books where it says you need ten thousand hours. <laughs> yeah, to be an expert. Like who, who defines? All you I can know? tell you this: if, if you uh, if you sit down with someone, you develop a relationship, and no matter what industry you're in, yeah. they will use you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because well, I, to go to you, I don't know if being an expert is a point of our uh, arrival, right? No. So you talk to people. You talk to Warren Buffett. Yeah. You talk to. Bill Gates, you know, all these people, they're still learning. Yeah, of right? course. And so they're masters right. of their field, but right. they're still learning. Yeah. That's why you think of but professional athletes still having a coach. But they're open yeah. to learning. Yeah. The people that right. are, yeah. there you go. They'll, they'll say, they may self say, you know, basically self plug themselves as an expert, right. but yeah. they're not willing to take any outside perspective anymore. Sure. Sure. And, and, or anything. Yeah. And so that's where they're stuck at, and then they're yeah. gonna get yeah. surpassed. I think that comes back to being coachable. Yeah, open minded. Yeah. You gotta yeah. be open minded for criticism. Yeah, yeah. someone to tell you, hey, you suck at this. You're yeah. doing this wrong. Yeah. You need to get better and yeah. do it this way. Yeah, because some people just shut down. They're not. Yeah. They're not gonna do it. Like, well, screw you. I don't. You know, I think of like Nick or like you. If you lose an account, or yeah. you go and you you you're up against another company to get an account, yeah. and you don't get it. Yeah. Do you go ask them why you weren't? Hell no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay. Because if I didn't get it, it's it always comes down to two things. If it's about a number, I don't want that client. Yeah. That's right. my opinion. Right. Like sure. that's how I roll. Like sure. so, right. sure. if they say 
okay, I, I bid you um, three bids. Yep, we right. chose the cheapest one, or maybe we chose the yeah. mid-range one. Maybe I was the most expensive. Maybe I was mid-range, and they chose the cheapest. Um, I don't ever think I'm the cheapest. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'll yeah. admittedly say that. Yeah. But I will say that if they don't choose me because of a number, I don't want them anyways. Because yeah. A, I didn't put enough time in or didn't have the put opportunity to develop a relationship with them so they would choose me not based on a number. Right. Or B, if they're just all about numbers, mm -hmm. they're not really a valuable client to me. Right. I, it's about the experience and the attention for right. me. So like, if they value what I'm giving them, you can't put a price on yeah. that. I, I still think though, your, your, best, uh, your best feedback are from losses. Oh no, of course so, not. So you know, yeah. going and saying, "Hey, yeah. why didn't you pick me?" Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, the other person was cheaper. Okay, that's fine. Well, yeah, and, and that coach made me do that. Okay, yeah. from that standpoint, no, I like that from that standpoint. But when you first said it, I magically thought I come from the oil and gas industry, sure. and I was in that was a very, very relationship based business. Right. No matter what product you sold, they used you because it was you. Right. It doesn't matter sure. because they're all kind of the same product across the board. You know, right. they're, they're painted different colors. One costs more than other, whatever it may be. But there's a lot of times I saw this in old school salespeople, they would get pissed and go to the, the, the whoever the person was in charge and say, hey, you didn't pick me. This is bull, you know, bullshit. I took, I brought you steaks every week. I did, like, that's what I immediately went to when sure, you said that. Sure, like, sure. I've never done, like, I'm not gonna go out and say, man, you should have picked me, why didn't you? But yeah, yeah I would love to have the feedback and say, yeah. okay, you didn't pick me because yeah. of price. Okay, now yeah. I know that like I said, I didn't either. I didn't have a chance to cultivate the relationship, or I didn't do it, or it's just based on yeah. price. And my coach had made me do that one time. I was like, she's like, did you get that listing? Mm -hmm. No, didn't get it. She's like, call that client and ask them. Ask yeah, what them, did they say? Ask them who they chose, ask them who they chose, and and so it, it was. Uh, it, one time it was because of commission, and I was okay. actually happy. Okay. I was like, hey, I'm not. Right. That's fine. Yeah. That's and the other and the other time they just said, hey, their presentation was better. Okay. But you know what to work on now. Exactly. That's exactly what my coach said. Hey. But it doesn't mean your presentation sucks. That one specific person who was viewing it may just connect it better with who was well, present. You know, giving and, the presentation. And that goes back to in our industry yeah. in real estate, people choose who they like. Exactly. Yeah. So and I and I'm sure people have chosen me over another agent that probably sold more houses than me. Yeah. yeah. But because when I walked in the door, they said they trusted me, liked me. Yeah. They're like, man, I want to work with this guy. For uh, for uh, for a while there, uh, my wife was working with me in sales, and uh, we she would go. Oh yeah, I remember she, that. She, yeah. she, she she would just go on a. Lori had her real estate license. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no, she no, was no. Uh, yeah, she, she was backup, no, man. She she was like she was my assistant. We were yeah. you know she was doing some. Larry, the trenches, bro. Stuff. Good the problem is, like, whenever you're getting in bed, it makes nice. a song. a strong marriage. <laughs> no, it, uh, it made a lot of counseling. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I go, you know, I'm like, you're getting in bed at 9 o'clock. I'm like, hey, did you do, did you do a response? And I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, gosh. So, uh, but, uh, but, but really, it was it was knowing my strengths and weaknesses, and she would offset that, right? Yeah. And then I would, we would be able to identify. If we're going to meet with a couple, I'd be able to identify who, you know, what their two, two different personalities yeah. are. Right. And, I, and I would tell Lori, hey, this person's the decision maker. You need to go con con get a conversation with the other person and get them out of the way so I can focus on the person that's going to make the decision and get it sealed up, right? Yeah. And so, uh, no, that makes for a good balance. Similar. You got to have balance, man. You got to have, you got to have the, you know, the ones you can't, if you can't play on it, find someone that can. Yeah. Or just, yeah. you know, figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't get to your why, Nick. What's your why? Man, my why, you know, so mine's a little bit different because me and my wife have no kids. Right. You know, we tried. It wasn't, you know, one, one. Not the cars. Yeah, one in the car. Right. So, and, and so, look, and, and and so, you know, some of them kind of, you know, rubbing some adoption. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'm not going to name anyone, but. it's still, hey, it's still an option. Yeah. Right? No, it's he, still an option. He is wise to take care of my kids now. So nah. He yeah. lives right down the road. Like, hey, yeah. Uncle Nick. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's done that a couple times. <laughs> Going to the movies. Uh, before I know, I'm like, "Where's Layton?" And here yeah. I am buying his kids candy. I'm like, "Where did he go?" You know. So my, you know, mine's really just, just to provide a better life for myself and my family, and provide service and value to people, and just help people. Yeah. Because you know, like you said earlier, if you just go out with a a, a mindset of, I just want to give you, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You know, right. whether, no, go ahead. You know, whether you know whether you whether you get paid or not. Yeah. But you know, and, and here's another. Here's my why too. Is more like why not? You know, why look if someone else is is successful, why why can't I? And then yeah. another thing is, man, how many how many good how many good years do we have left? Right. Like, look, how think about it. 
I'm 38, so how many years until I'm going to need a walker yeah. or I can't see? <laughs> no, seriously. So you don't want to have to be right. still doing the so, same thing. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. if I 60, am I going to be 65? Does that mean I'm going to be 70 when I get to that point? So really, I'm at 38, 40. I got 20 more years, 25 more years to make the life that I that I dream of yeah. and, then li- and then actually live it, yeah. you know? So, I mean. Well, I mean, so with you, you're still in the trenches and the passion shines through when you're doing the work, you know, I know you've, you're starting to build a team right, and you're right, growing and right. you have, you know, quite a bit of, you know, work, but Layton and you're back to your position because I, I, I want to hit on this a lot because I just see this a lot. Like there's a lot of controversy around the person who's in charge. Okay. So like your passion has shifted now because you're not dealing with clients on a day-to-day basis. You're dealing with the agent. So sure. Which is worse? I, I mean, <laughs> I understand. Kidding. Well, I mean, there's. I mean, yeah, you can't. I mean, make I blow some, up his phone all the time. Yeah, honestly. I mean, so are you passionate about that part now, or what's your passion now? Because it's had to have changed a little bit yeah. because the positions change. Yeah. Well, it's still just helping people, right? right. So, okay. And I think that you know, so you go from I, helping clients now to helping your neighbors. Here's what. Here's what. Here's what. Here's my thing, and I, and I go back to that too. We, we have a limited amount of time here. Yeah. I have a limited amount of time in my day. Yeah. I have yeah. four kids. I have a wife. I, I'm actually a very efficient and structured worker. Yeah. He makes fun of me for cutting out of the office at like four o'clock. Oh, I, yeah. I already know how you roll. I was, yeah. I was, I was uh, getting nervous about yeah. starting this podcast. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. so I'm. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm actually forty hours a week, and that's what I work. Yeah. I don't work yeah. on weekends. That's I don't cool. work in the afternoon, and I've structured that, and I've hired great people around me to yeah. handle things when I'm not there. Um, but uh, you know, I'm only going to devote my time to something that I can. Uh, two things: one, I can make a difference in, mm-hmm. and that I support on a, uh, I guess, on just a meaningful level. Yeah. Right. That I can get behind for a while. I was serving on a. A nonprofit that had to deal with arts and entertainment. Yeah, and I did that for a while, and quickly realized I had no passion in this area. Yeah. Okay. So I got off that board. Yeah. So I want to devote my time. I know I have limited time. I want it to be something I'm passionate about and something I can make a difference in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for agents, so there are actually agents that we've turned away because I couldn't help them. Yeah. Okay? I I just didn't I just didn't think it was going to be a good fit, and I couldn't make a difference. And so well, that's hard agents, to say that as a business owner too to go yeah. ahead and. You know, just okay. Let's not even try to get into this because I know it's not going to work. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And that and that was that kind of goes back when I interviewed for for Layton's company, Layton and Adam. And and I first met him for the first time. First time I ever met Layton. I'm like, man, who's this big goofy dude, man? Like, who, who is this guy? And I knew I knew Adam from the previous company that we were at. And so, um, but after talking to him, I mean, I look up to him as mentors. I mean, Adam's got a team that I inspire to grow. Like, yeah. And so, and then I got on the real estate investing side. You know, I look for him mentorship and that, yeah, and you know, and growing my you know, rental portfolio, and so like you, you just gotta find value wherever you can find it, you know, and yeah. and take it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so uh, to go back to that, I, you know, uh, my my passion is just still helping people. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I want to be successful in whatever I do. See, so. I, I I think I know that, but I want people to hear that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because that question gets asked a lot when people shift when they become. In the grind, growing, they're more respected right. sometimes by their peers. So they get to a, a position of power, to where the people that work under them, who may or may not, you know, be passionate about what they're doing, judge them or may you know envy them a little bit, and it kind of throws everything off. Yeah, you know. So I think that yeah. information is good to put out there. Yeah, you know, I think that one thing, just to go back, this overarching thing I keep going back to in our conversation mm-hmm. is, uh, I think people want to hear the truth. Oh, I yeah. think that Even if they don't want to hear it, they, they yeah. want to hear it. And so, and so, you know, I, I, we're in an industry where it's almost like we don't want to tell our clients the truth. Mm-hmm. Or we're, we're afraid that if we tell them right. the truth, it's going to hurt them. Right. Yeah. And so I just tell, like, if it, it, you know, everybody wants to become a real estate agent. And so I just sit there for an hour and talk them out of it. I'm yeah. Like, you don't want to do this. Well, if they still but, want to do it after you have that conversation, exactly, then sign them up. Exactly. You know? Or I'll go to agents that are, you know, I'm looking at their you know what they've been working for a year and they're making twenty thousand dollars i'm like go go become a school teacher yeah you'll get benefits you'll get time off <laughs> yeah. like don't don't like you this is an expensive hobby yeah if that's what you're yeah. treating yeah, like. of course and so uh and so you know and i think it just goes down to with our agents and we just tell them the truth hey yeah. 
this is where you got to work on it. This is what you need to do different. This is where I see that you're struggling or, you know, and, uh, and so he goes down to clients and just tell them the truth. Okay. So, well, it's interesting. And then the 80, 20 rule. Yep. Any any industry, twenty percent of the real estate agents are doing eighty percent of the business. Yeah, no, I mean, it it's in any industry. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, it really it is. Would. There's, you can't be the person that takes all the work, um, but you also can't be the person that doesn't take any. I don't know. It's just a weird balance there. Like people, yeah. there's there's a small percentage of people yeah. who set the groundwork for everyone yeah. but the broad perspective you know of people that are looking at it are like well i want to be that person but they're not willing to do it right and, and it comes back to competition like yeah. i do real estate it's all the time well there's 1500 oh, dude, man. and i like and you know and i just want to be like the only competition man. is is in the mirror like look the, in the, the mirror yeah. like I hate it's in the that. mirror <laughs> when i they, when i when i talk to clients they're always like well do you work with another plumbing company I'm like, yeah, Bob. I work with another plumbing company, but um, that that their plumbing company's not your plumbing company. You yeah, have a right. different logo. Yeah. You have a different culture. Yeah. You're you're in a different service area. Right. And yeah. would you uh, make any money if you only work for one residential client? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, dude, it's just crazy how that works. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's interesting and it's like, there is no competition. Yeah. I don't care what industry you're. There's really not because there's enough business to go around for everyone. There really oh, is. Yeah. I mean, at scale, there's so much opportunity because, yeah. A, most people aren't taking advantage or trying to get it like they should. Yeah. They're only, you know, capturing 5 to 10% of their potential. Yeah. You know, as a whole, probably, like you said, the 80, 20, 80% yeah. of those people are only capturing 5 to 10% yeah. of their potential. Oh, yeah. Whereas, you know, like, that's that just shines through. It's like, okay, well, I mean, there's no way we can tap out here and not and run out of business. Right. Yeah. It's you just know? like in our industry, what, 1,500 realtors? Yeah. And there might be 500, and I might be overstating that even sold one yeah. house this year. Right. So how much more well, business can we all get? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, you know, this is a principle. I don't know where I read this or got this from, but, you know, when you idolize something, then anything that threatens it, you have to demonize. Yep. Right? And so if you idolize your brand, or your business, or you know, in our culture, it's how much money we make. Yeah. Then we have to demonize everything that comes right. into it. And so, for us, you know, I would gladly say we have some great realtors mm -hmm. in our market that do not work for my company, yeah. right? right? And I'd love to have them, yeah. but they work for someone else. There are some great brokers in our business that yeah. don't work for me. And so, it's not this thing where uh, where I'm, you know, just demonizing them or trying to compete with you, them. You and, can, and, man. You know, I, I just, it's, it's out of your control. And yeah. So I go to why, say that. Why spend energy on that? Exactly. You'd be spending energy on being more efficient. Exactly. And so <laughs> what we can do is say, well. Right. This company's doing this, or this person left, or did this, and and so my what I cut out of my life is focusing on things I have no control. Exactly, over. Right. dude. That's right. I talk about that all the time, especially yeah. like stress. Why are you so yeah. stressed? People get so stressed about things they can't control, exactly. right. family, whatever. Yeah, they're not going to change. <laughs> Worry about your shit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. and to go back to the competition thing, like if you're spending time. Worrying about what someone else is doing in your market, you're already losing. You're, yeah. that's, you're, you're already losing. You can't control. Yeah, you like, can't control. Of course, you may want to look at them and say, hey, okay, well, they did this. That, that worked. That worked well. Maybe I implement that somehow, but sure. I don't want to do it to where it's not me. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you I see you it. focus on yourself. I see it. You know, in yeah. your guys' industry, it happens a lot. Yeah. You're like, hey, well, so and so is doing X amount of millions of dollars a year. Okay. What yeah. are they doing? Okay, but is that how you want to operate? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, like my business, our person? business is like you get on Facebook and you'll see a realtor had three, like they'll put in three <laughs> closings this week. And I'll be like, man, this dude's killing it. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll go, and then I'll go ask Layton or something about about this realtor. They're like, oh yeah, he he's only sold three houses this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, but, you know, they just kind of, you know, but, yeah, if, you, if you're, if you're watching the people that are in your industry more than you're watching the right. end consumer, yeah. Yeah. you're losing. Yeah. Yeah. You should be focused on the end consumer 24-7 yeah. yeah. because that is your that is who you're yeah. you're serving. Yeah. Yeah. You should never worry right. about anyone else. Hey, like, I, I got enough problems to worry about. People talk about this all the time. Like when we manage uh, social medias for companies and yeah. stuff like that, they'll, they'll say, well, um, my business doesn't be represented that way. You know, this has to have this business, whatever. And I'll quickly say, well, guess what, uh, Tom? Um, the end consumer is viewing the content. Right. The business is not viewing the content. Your competition may be viewing the content, but that competition boils down to one end consumer. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, look, yeah. guys, I got some gifts for you guys. Um, so it's Christmas time, so I got some like, you know, some of these little gift sets, man. Um, Nick, yours is really gaudy. It's got like, you know, but uh, this is Four Roses bourbon. 
Oh nice. man, you knew I was an alcoholic. Well, well, well I knew you. Like, <laughs> the way, thanks, DJ. Well, well, we talked about something the other day, yeah. and you were, and you you kind of alluded to the fact that you like bourbon. So I was yeah. like, okay. And Layton, nice. Layton, you got me drinking old fashioned oh, a long man. time ago. Dude, so he, this he is got a, me drinking old fashioned. I know, right? This is a, this is an old fashioned <laughs> kit where you can is actually it really? yeah, like it's got the stir, the glass, nice. and everything. I don't know if you have one of these, but you do nice. now. Nice. Oh, man, yeah, man. Well, we've uh, we've had quite a few of those. Uh, definitely have found out who has the good ones, who has the bad ones in town. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you found bad. out. Yeah, a lot more bad ones. A lot of bad, man. I'm yeah. sure you found quite a few good ones abroad too, yeah. since you, you know yeah. you travel a lot. Yeah, he's got me drinking those things too. Man, they're yeah. awesome. I was right? actually hoping to go across the street and have one here right okay. up there. Hey, hey Fatty Ripples does have. Hey, we may have time. It's, it, it is cool outside, man. I can't drink yeah. them when they're hot, when it's hot outside. Man, yeah. I, I like a. Uh, yeah. I like yeah. a good whiskey drink when it's cold. I just yeah. like the yeah. the uh, I just like the ice ball they put in there. That's why I drink. <laughs> oh yeah, that is yeah, that's the cool part. Yeah. If they don't hey, if they don't have the the, the ice ball, you're like yeah. no. Well, you, you know, know I do have uh, the, my kids' Christmas program this night. So, <laughs> <laughs> He's on a one drink minimum. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh man. Well, I want to say because I know you're about to wrap up. Yeah. But you know, I want to say thank you. Yeah, for having us on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think of where I'm at, and I don't want to be cheesy with it, but where I'm at has a lot to do with the relationship with you. And yeah, that's I mean, what I identified we've, we've, yeah, early on. We've uh, we've connected with some of the same people along the way, that's for yeah, sure. And yeah. I can say vice, vice yeah. versa the same for me. Well, what I appreciate about you is that you're not territorial. And, yeah, not at you know, all. You want to play. Yeah. When, I, when I first met you, uh, I would describe you as, like, the business matchmaker. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, so I would say, I would say <laughs> this dude, I said, this guy knows a ton of people in business, yeah. and he loves to take connections in. What was cool about it is, you know, a lot of people want to make a connection, but they want to stay in the middle and benefit from both yeah, sides. That's, and right, you, right, you're right, like, right. hey, you need to know this person because y'all can benefit from yep. it. And you would hear a story six months later, hey, we're doing business together now, yep. right? You weren't tied into making money off of it. Exactly. And uh, and I would even say I have real estate agents at my company because of you. And well, so, I mean, I know I appreciate that. And, and with me, it's like I know that. I've had a million opportunities to do the wrong thing. Yeah. Or someone's like, hey man, if you give me this deal, I'll cut you in and I immediately yeah, yeah, say no. Yeah. I don't want any percent. I could do I could be a lot better off right now yeah. right. um with a lot less bills yeah. and debt. But um I, I quickly say that because I've seen so many failures in business and um in industries that I've worked in, in the past moving into this and um if you just give, 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 it's gonna come back. Yeah. Like yeah. I'd rather see it come back. You know, because if something were to happen, we were growing a business together, you know, I was helping and I was in the middle of it and it fell out, then I lose everything I cultivated yeah. and it just, yeah. you know, goes yeah. right back to relationships. I'm yeah. glad you said that and thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks, DJ, because I, you know, I wouldn't have met you if it wasn't for Layton because yeah. when I came over to Berkshire Hathaway, you know, like I said, my 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 business was picking up the phone. He goes, "You need you need to network. You need to meet people." I'm yeah. like, "I don't want to meet anyone. I'm just picking up the phone." <laughs> I'll just call and he goes, "No." And so and so he you know he got me into the BNI. It's 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 just opened my mind. I get to yeah. meet awesome people like you and and all the BNI members. And well, now you have a whole other um, oh, strength to play off of when it's was you know just you just had that. There's not a lot of personalized service in making yeah. a phone call. Right. You have to yeah. get oh, the you have, to get the yes. you have to get the yes and then. <laughs> You right. go and sit down with them and then you have to convert myself. them. Yeah. But yeah. when you get a referral oh. from someone who knows you, you have a relationship with, you don't have to do anything. You just walk in the door, okay, great, I'll use Nick because you told me to use him and he's great. Yeah. And, we're, and, we're, and, and we're all friends. Yeah. And so we can all call each other at any time, even though we're you know we're you know, business related, but we can all call each other and, hey, what's up? Yeah. What's going on? You want to have a drink or you know whatever, whatever the case may be. So, well, yeah, thanks Man. for Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for being on. And everyone, please subscribe to the podcast. All right, thanks.